I wouldn't be proud to work for IBM. They're effectively sponsoring sexism here. I wouldn't be proud. Some of the policies that Thatcher put in place have had lasting impact and lasting negative impact, I think, on our society. Discontent generally, I mean, we can see it. We saw it on the streets then with the riots and we, we've seen riots more recently. And I think it's the same sort of discontentment. It's that rich-poor divide. In, in, in early days, it was sort of north-south, and I think that's exacerbated now. And I think we, we are suffering. The, the lower parts of society, those who have least, have even less now. And I think they're really seeing it with feral youth. That's all about the rich and poor divide. And that, again, comes from the Thatcher era. My book is a way of getting revenge, although it is very much on the way things work and the feeling that I was duped into it. In terms of brand duping, it does Brand overall, it's great. I agree. It would be great and if we do I get 13 million, that. that's great. But I do feel sorry for those central London shopkeepers who not only are losing out, but they yeah. expected to actually yeah. do better this year. There was one time when I was working and I took the lifts down and wandered around the city. And there were lights on, and I could see a few other faces staring at screens, and it felt as though there were other people out there, although the sense of loneliness was no less. I don't understand how much more women have to do in order to teach But then the, the achievements, you know what... There's and, the achievements, what? but then this is personality. Sarah Stevenson, both parents died this year, world champion taekwondo. How can you do more? How can you be more of a sports personality? Do you think publishers are guilty of sexism? Absolutely. Um, and I think a lot of marketers are guilty of it, and I think you have to draw the line somewhere, but I think there is also a, a, a scale from, from heavily female to heavily male, and I don't think we have to just silo them one or the other. Publishers' hearts are in the right place. Uh, they obviously want to sell books. That's their primary objective, and it should be along the lines of the author's objective, to sell lots of copies of the book. However, what they're doing is, is thinking very short term and only looking at each book in turn rather than the, the lifelong sales of an author's book. It's a, it's a bit of a myth that the author gets to choose their title. It does, it does happen sometimes yeah. when there's collaboration between the publisher and author, but in my case, absolutely not, and I was rallying against it pretty much every time. That's exactly that's the problem, Donna, and I think well, by saying women's fiction, do we really mean fiction that is only to be read by women? Because actually I've been labelled as that many times, and although I am a woman, I'm a woman writer, it doesn't mean that 100% of my readers are, are women, and that really frustrates a lot of female authors. They would go out in the evenings, go to bars together, go to lap dancing clubs, and, um, and bond there. And of course, when they bond out of the office, that has repercussions in the office. I started jotting down little notes and just little anecdotes about what had happened that day at work or things that had happened that have really frustrated me. I really just collected together these scraps of paper, wrote them up on my laptop, and when a friend came to visit, I just gave him you know, a print-off of these little anecdotes. And on the way back, he texted me and said, do you know what, just reading these make me feel exhausted, Polly. You should write a book. And I thought, why don't I write a book? They should know that every email and every phone call they make is recorded and, and they should be accountable for everything. In fact, on our training, I remember the phrase that we were taught, which was, don't do anything or say anything you don't want splashed across the New York Times tomorrow. Obviously, they forgot that advice. But, you know, the fact, the fact is they did it, and not just one person did it. It wasn't a, an, an isolated incident or one, one bank even. It, it was, it's collusion. About 40 years ago, it was quite natural for people who were 16 to have multiple options for their life. Some of them would be very academic and go to university. Some would be more vocational and go to either polytechnics or straight into apprentices. And it's taken that long for us to realise that we actually need those different avenues. Unfortunately, that's what's happening here, and someone needs to shout about it. Why? Because it's wrong, it's fundamentally wrong to exclude parts of society, just as it was wrong to exclude um, Afro-Caribbeans, but they changed that policy in 1990 at the same golf club. So they changed that policy, why aren't they changing it for male and female?